Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here. This is going to be week number seven of the UBL and uh, this one might have to come out a little bit late, but I am rearranging some footage around on some computers and basically, and I'm going to get this out as soon as I possibly can, but we are up against the West Virginia Minioars coached by Ultra Player and this is a really, really scary team to go up against. He is undefeated, I believe, going into this matchup and honestly, there's just no signs of stopping. He has so many threats, like the Rillaboom on its own can kind of just tear through my team, right? And this kind of dual terrain setup he has going on as well as as the Halucha has just been tearing through teams. I believe it's going to be on pace to just tear through the KO leaderboard. So hopefully I'm going to be able to manage it, but this is what we're going to have here. Right, so we do see the Jirachi, Rillaboom, Rhyhorn, Exploud, and the Weezing Halucha combination. Now, I really don't have any, any great answers to a really strong Exploud, right? I think I'm just going to have to manage it as best as I can, but honestly, it's not something that my team deals with that well, right? So just based off of team preview, right? It looks like the biggest thing that I'm going to have to concern myself with is going to be that Rillaboom, and obviously that Halucha is going to be a huge, huge problem, but I feel like the Rillaboom is going to cause the most problems for my team. Obviously, I have to manage the Halucha to stop it from sweeping in the end game, but in the early to mid game, the Rillaboom is going to cause the most mismatches, and it's going to potentially be the thing that that wears my team down the quickest and potentially leads up to that ultimate halucha sweep if i allow it to but ultimately i'm just going to try to outpiece this team right so i'm trying to make it so that real Home doesn't ultimately end up becoming a problem because and just through pure sheer force and damage output right so you see the dual specs with the dragapult and the heliolisk and the band with the with the bear scuda i have a lot of Volturn options i believe everything on this team all my offensive mons have some form of momentum and my moongus obviously is going to be regenerator but ultimately i really do like the way that this team kind of functions together now i do think the standout lead here is going to be this dragapult now i can potentially bait out a ride on lead and if i can i can potentially get a surf off on it but a lot of those kind of turn one plays have not worked out well for me and especially after missing so many hydro pumps i'm I I'm not going to go that route this week, but I do think that the, that the Rhydon is especially problematic for me because I really don't have the best answers for Rhydon, and Dragapult is really the only thing that can hard scare out a Rhydon, and anything else I could just probably use turn out on, maybe get some damage off uh, if it makes sense, but it's really going to be my best catch-all lead here, so I'm going to get straight into the battle. Okay, so I am going to lead off with the dragapult here and he does end up leading with the ride on now this is exactly the kind of scenario that i was thinking about because i don't really have anything that kind of scares it out or deals with it or really just prevents rocks at all right but here he i feel like he kind of has to respect the surf and or hydro pump but um i think he has to respect something and honestly i probably should have clicked u-turn i don't know i didn't know whether or not he would really respect it that much but it, this felt like no drawback, right? Either I get damage off on something or or he knows what's coming and he ends up going into the Rillaboom, which is pretty worst case scenario, honestly. I mean, if I clicked U-turn, I think that would have been a really, really fantastic play, but it really felt like I wasn't in a position to kind of make that play. Obviously, turn one is always going to be tough, um, but it still does respectful damage. I, I feel like that damage alone just confirms, just screams specs because um, that's really respectful damage for a non-stab resisted hit so i'm really happy with the turn one damage but i'm really not happy that i'm gonna have to switch out immediately and not even gonna be able to u-turn not even gonna be able to um eat a progressive glide or whatever the case may be but we're gonna have to kind of maneuver here a little bit and the, again like this really just puts me in an, in an awkward position every time it comes in because it's going to be able to out prioritize everything on my team for the most part and it's just never going to give me turns that I'm going to kind of need here as I kind of maneuver around how I'm going to play his team because I really have to kind of find the damage here. Um, and there's going to be... And there's going to be just so much maneuvering around that it's always uh, going to be difficult, right? So... In any case, I am able to go out into the Amoongus. This is pretty much going to be my dedicated switch in every darn time. Uh, part of me really did think that he would want to get some damage off with, with Grassy Glide. Um, he might, especially, here, here's my thought process, right? If he saw that I was Specs and he kind of thought that he had a free turn, maybe Grassy Glide was his play, but I think he, you know, obviously sussed out that I have an Amoongus. Ha, <laughs> get it, Amoongus sussed out. But... I think after you, you see the Amoongus, it becomes really difficult to kind of make that play. I do get a little bit off of that exchange with the Rocky Helmet, and I will be able to Regenerator out here. 
um, which is going to be pretty plus, but at the same time, there's still just so many things that I don't deal with well, right? And honestly, I think that damage started to make me think about, at, at the very least, consider that that, that might be banded. But um, I don't think I counted it. Out. I, I think I was too like stressed out at the moment to, to, to really like calc it out earnestly. But now I feel I felt like I have to go out into um, my strongest answer to a, or at the very least, a thing that lets me potentially not lose to to, to Jirachi. I believe this thing has the foul play so that I don't uh, lose straight up um if I remember right and I believe I'm gonna attempt a thunder wave I don't exactly remember this set 100% I'm gonna take a look um, as well but yeah I do have the discharge thunder wave south rock um, getting rocks up early is going to be pretty um, so solid for me does get the toxic off right away now that really kind of upset me I really did expect this thing to kind of want to be a really um, offensive set, but this kind of this kind of toxic set just made me think that it might have sub. It might have it. It might um, have calm mind or cosmic power. It could be so so many things, right? And it really kind of scared me in, in in the moment. I really didn't know what to expect here, but just the fact that um, I'm gonna have to deal with the non-standard Jirachi, and I'm gonna have to spend a few turns kind of figuring out what it's going to be. And all that time, I'm gonna be taking Chip with with um, with uh, Toxic, and the fact that I'm going to have to potentially give this thing turns to set up as I kind of figure out what this Jirachi is is really not looking great for me overall. But I believe I just tried to hit this thing. I might have gone for a Thunder Wave question mark. I believe I do at some point. But uh, I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just straight up go for a thunder wave. I obviously I had to risk the, the sub, but this is just kind of the. But this is just the types of things that you kind of have to. Um, these are the kind of risks that you have to take in the in these situations, right? He obviously could have just clicked sub, and it would have put me in a not great position. I would obviously have to click earth power ne next turn, and hopefully that that breaks up, and hopefully I don't give it. It turns to calm mind up, but these are just kinds of the risks that I had to take. Um, and especially just seeing the fact that it was, that it was, uh, that it was so stally so, so early on made me feel like I could make that play, but it really could have gone badly. Honestly, it could have gone badly, especially, and, and then I see the protection. Now I'm reasonably confident that I won't have sub, but you could see I was hard thinking about wanting to go out into the Helilisk because Helilisk has okay special defense at least enough special defense where i could take a hit from a probably no investment jirachi or a very little investment jirachi because it's probably a super stally set so i could assume that i could take a hit and then be able to volt switch out and be able to kind of at least make some headway in this one but the protect just screwed me and again that was me kind of being afraid of sub again even though like it felt i felt like i was in an okay spot um being able to switch out but at the same time if it didn't go my way then i it could have been so much so much worse so here i'm in a position where i try to just figure out what to do i'm thinking maybe the 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 rhyhorn tries the right on tries to come in but it's not the case i just waste a turn I, I mean i do get a spec surf off which isn't nothing but it's just clearly clearly not what i'm trying to do in this situation and and yeah you, and yeah you can see like i could take a psychic pretty comfortably that's what i kind of expected when i wanted when i thought about uh, initially switching it in but i'm putting myself in a not great position by having to kind of play this way and i'm just trying to figure out what the best course of action is i'm honestly hard thinking about dragon fault because because i'm positive that i can take it i hit decently well but um it puts me in a not great spot especially if i have to take a grassy glide later on in the match i'm just not going to be in the best situation at all so i'm hard thinking about stunfisk again but i know that he can kind of outplay my stunfisk a little bit it's going to be really difficult for me to outplay his, his, his rashi from a stunfisk but in the end i mean it's what i feel like i have to do right uh and and again it, it, this jirachi is just putting me in a really bad spot it's getting damage off on my team which i shouldn't have let it happen but i really have to minimize this jirachi as much as i possibly can and it's just going to be difficult, right? Like I, like I'm, like I'm at a loss of what I can really do here. Um, now, one notable thing is, 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 I believe in this exchange, I at the very least at some point got rocks up. So, at the very least, 
that is a plus for for stunfisk but now i'm trying to figure out yeah now i'm trying to hard figure out if i can call the turn where it's going to want to go protect and if i can try to make something happen off of that right because i'm really trying to make headway and not try because look if i could make it out if i can make it out of this exchange with my with my stunfisk at least a little bit intact then i'm feeling fantastic about how i can kind of manage the rest of my game because honestly i felt like this risk was an okay risk to take in exchange with the trade-off being that it could potentially it could potentially give me a, a late game stack with a stunfisk or it could help me maneuver around the um the stunfisk a little bit later on in the match if i have to if i can get off thunder wave um that would be amazing but this is these are the kinds of things that i'm kind of weighing out in my head i felt like this was going to be an acceptable risk it doesn't look great for me in the moment it, it, admittedly but i'm going to have to kind of figure out how to play this right and it feels in this moment i believe i i, I assume that i click flip turn yeah i just I, I just click the flip turn and it does a very solid amount of damage i get a crit which is a little bit unfortunate because obviously if i knew that i would i would have crit a liquidation would have been fantastic there it would have prevented the ride on from wanting to come in and it will probably would have baited in the the, the rillaboom but i potentially you know have the amoongus for that if i was able to to, to ko this thing with my beer scuda it would have been a pretty great spot to be in i think but here we are i do i I do get a really strong crit and i will be able to get some damage off now i believe with a with an earth power and now all all that i'm hoping for right now is just to stop the bleeding right i just want to maneuver my stun fisk in a way where i can just take out this distrachi and not have any more damage spread out or, uh, um over my team now there was a a strong protect there I maybe should have called it. I maybe should have got out in, in, into something, but this just felt like a moment where if the damage is on the table, you take the damage if you're ultra player. So obviously, it's an I'm just making all the all the incorrect calls at the moment. But for right now, like I said, I'm just trying to stop the bleeding. I just want to, I mean, ideally not lose it to Jirachi, but I don't think I'm gonna uh, quite lose it to Jirachi. But I'm just trying to. I I mean I. I, I tried to get a little bit greedy with um, the switches. I gave up half my HP to Hulalisk, and I gave up almost all of my HP to Verascuta. So I did get a little—I did get caught being a little bit greedy in that capacity. But I don't—I mean, they were calculated risks that didn't go my way, right? That's—that's that's how I have to think of these plays. And uh, we're gonna—we're gonna try to move on, right? Thankfully, those were two mons. I mean, the reason why they were calculated risk is because those were two mons that don't really mind being at low HP. Um, especially if I can prevent rocks. Especially if I can get some passive uh, from the from the grassy surge. But overall, we're in a double down situation, which are which is always super duper scary for me. But I think that I believe that uh, this Dramantian is going to be the best option for me. I don't quite remember what I do in this situation, if I had to guess. I mean, I'd probably U-turn out, but he has to respect a Zen Headbutt. He has to respect an Earthquake. I mean, he has to respect a freaking Bulldoze or whatever. I don't, I don't know. But he has to respect something, right? So that's I, so I'm, I imagine I play off of that and I, and I click U-turn. I'd be surprised if I just raw Flare Bliss in, into this thing. Um, and I don't have Earthquake. Which, oh, no, I do have Earthquake. I'm sorry. Um, they're just so similar in color to, to Flare Bliss. I thought I had two Fire Moves. But... Um, yeah, this is a tough turn for me here because, I mean, again, it, it comes down to allowing him to kind of spread damage across my team, right? If I, if I just click U-turn, he holds his ground and he gets strange steam off, and then he can just get some free damage off on, on my team. Although, th theoretically, if he stays in, then I always have the, the Amoongus to, to resist, strange, resist a strange steam. I have um things that can deal with a sludge bomb if it comes out, so I don't know. Maybe it's maybe uh is not as big of a risk as i thought but regardless um he's gonna yeah I, yeah i guess he's gonna play off of me potentially just wanting to hit this thing but did you get a u-turn off so i am getting a little bit of um positive momentum going in my direction although uh no i just i, I, I was gonna say I was, I was gonna say although it does present a little bit of a difficult situation for me to be in um but no i just think hard about going into into bear scooter i think at this point i'm trying to calc out if if i can get away with just a standard ass flip turn 
and um, because I did get a decent amount of chip damage off between that U-turn and that um, that round of rocks damage, and I believe that damage was important for Flip Turn to be able to uh, potentially be a roll in this situation. I I do think that that chip genuinely did matter in this situation. So here we are. We're just going to go into this turn, being able to really freely Flip Turn. Right? He can. He, he has um, some switches available to him if he really wants to keep this thing. Obviously, Rilla Moon is always going to be an issue. Obviously, he might just assume that I want to liquidation here or, or that I need to liquidation here um, because if I'm not banded, then potentially, you know, things get super duper iffy here. But uh, yeah, yeah, Rillaboom is always an, an available play, but I am able to get a little bit of momentum here with this flip turn. And I, and I am reasonably happy with how this kind of momentum game is going on because it looks like a game where... I'm getting back a little bit of what I lost through all those quote-unquote... Um, uh, calculated risks, right? I'm not entirely just losing this uh, this game to the fact that so much so so much of my team has taken uh, all this damage for no real reason, right? So from here, I have to think a lot about what what I want to do. In truth, I don't think I thought enough about what, what I want to do here. Um, I believe I do end up going out into this Rillaboom or <laughs> into this Dragapult here, right? And I'm trying to, I believe at this moment, I'm trying to calc out if U-Turn can potentially KO, because I think that's what I want to do here. Um, and at this point, I, I believe I'm still assuming that this thing is banded, right? I don't think that it, he's given me any reason to believe it's not banded, and I believe that's the assumption that I'm working off of at this point. Uh, he does go for the Grassy Glide. I honestly don't remember even a little bit uh, whether or not this confirms banned or not. But I do get the huge turn off. I do get the KO, and it turns out that it's a crit. I do believe that crit mattered. Uh, Ultra player showed me a steam for the match, and it was a max HP real boom, which I believe genuinely made the difference between it being able to take that U-turn and not being able to take that U-turn, and the crit made it not matter. So apologies for that. Um, it doesn't feel great. Uh, it wouldn't feel great to be in that position to lose a Mon based off of a crit like that. Um, Especially Oman that is so annoying to my team, but it does allow in my bear scuda and I, and I still believe I still believe that my bear scuda is my best way of kind of again being able to, to get a bunch of damage off being able to flip turn out It gives me the most momentum options it it allows me to keep to keep the ride on from from really going crazy I don't want the ride on I mean if if it's possible to uh, Go through the flow of this match and prevent rocks. I'm going to um Prioritize that as much as I possibly can um Realistically, it might have been a better play to, to just Shadow Ball into the the Rillaboom, let the Rhydon come in. I don't know. It's really, really tough to say. But regardless, we're here. <laughs> and um, we're going to be able to flip turn again, I believe. Yeah, I don't think there's any option. I believe I did uh, calc make a few calcs while I was waiting on Ultra Player to send them on out. And I do believe that I took a look at uh, the, the Weezing calcs. Uh, just in case, um, because it did look like one, one of his best options to kind of deal with a bear scooter on that type of um, U-turn KO play, and uh, I feel like flip turn was always going to be my play, right? Because it, it could obviously force him out, and I don't think liquidation was ever going to quite get me there. Um, potentially, I should have brought psychic fangs on this set, but you know, who's to say? I like, I like it's. It's so tough to kind of build out a solid bear ski set, as you guys will uh, see in a little bit. But regardless, we're here. Um, we're still waiting on Ultra Player now. It's funny because I'm I'm looking through these these damage calcs um, on my screen at the, at the moment, right? Not not right now, but when this battle was happening, and and I'm trying to keep in mind just how much damage i have to do to make liquidation be a ko and it's still i i i think i'm nowhere near like close to, to, to the amount that i really you know should be doing to kind of ensure those kinds of plays but um it's not like i'm trying to just i i it's not like i feel like i had to just ko the wheezing on like every time it comes out i'm as long as i can potentially chip it down and especially with rocks being able to kind of chip it down the, the way that it is I'm feeling pretty solid about my chances on being able to um, ship down the wheezing enough where the rest of my team can kind of pick up the slack eventually. 
uh, especially if I continue, if I continually, you know, force it out and kind of maneuver around it. I think this really surprised me because um, he he obviously like went into the wheezing on my bear scooter and then pulled a double. But I think he knew that he had to sack this thing off. I guess I don't uh, I don't know. I don't know. Looking back on it, it does. It is a it is an odd turn here. I don't. Yeah. Okay. So I thankfully. Um, I did, I, I, I believe I ran a calc and I, you know, saw that I was able to kill with a U-turn. Obviously, that was going to be optimal because I don't really want to uh, commit to the field in that way, especially when the ride-on is, is just chilling out there. It allows me to go back into my fish and it's going to threaten a KO on, on a ride-on on a simple flip turn, which is going to be a no-drawback play given the fact that um, it, it covers the, the, the ride-on staying in or the ride-on switching out. So that's so I'm gonna click it eventually. I'm gonna definitely click it because obviously, um, flip turn is gonna be the the optimal play now. Obviously, he could be trying to. Oh no! I I remember what 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 happens here. Oh no! N oh, no! I don't think I remember what happens here. I believe he goes back in a wheezing question mark. I believe he goes back in a wheezing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we can play this whole, you know, flip turning tr uh, thing again. So this confused me again as to why he would um, kind of play it out in this way. But I think he noticed, he realizes that I have too much material still um, to kind of go for game in this moment. So I think he was kind of maneuvering around with um, when it comes to turns of when it comes to turns of misty terrain. So I'm not too too sure, um, but I believe that's what was happening here. But it does allow me to uh, flip turn out into this thing because this thing again is going to be able to take the strange seam the best. Uh, but he goes for the memento, right? And this is definitely not the best here, right? Uh, again, it is you know mildly confusing why he didn't do this before giving up the the X blood, but. I think now he's confident that, that, that he's able that he's in a position to, to go for game and uh, he goes for the memento out into the oh wait for it I mean he's gonna do it eventually he's gonna bring it out eventually into the halucha in order to uh, get the unburden get the misty seed off and uh, now he's gonna try to make things happen right and now uh, this is where I start to think to myself oh well, I did not bring uh, Spore on this set, which actually works out to my advantage, right? Because obviously, I am susceptible to getting hecked up by a sub here. Um, and 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 either way, I did hard think about clicking Toxic here. Um, he's not affected by the Misty Terrain because he's off the ground. Um, so I did really think hard about wanting to either go for a Sludge Bomb or wanting... Or, or, uh, either wanted to go for damage or go for a toxic in this situation. Either way, it would have been uh, it would have put me in an awkward spot here. But um, I'm trying to think of what kind what kind of end game is gonna ideally help me not lose to this thing, right? So I believe I just go for the sludge bomb, and unfortunately I am at minus two. But he ends up going for yeah, he ends up going for the substitute. Um. Expecting me to, to, to want to spore, I have to imagine. I go for the sludge bomb and uh, it doesn't break the sub. Now, this confused me in, in the moment. It 100% confused me in the moment. But after a few seconds of thinking about it, it's because uh, he he lowered my attack with Memento. Um, so honestly, the reason I'm just taking as long as I am right now is because I was confused. But... It took me a minute to, 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 to realize that he was mementoing me, and that's why I, I lost my attack power, and that's why um, I'm in the position where I am now. But because he went for the sub, well, obviously, it meant it, it means that he wants to click Swords Dance, right? That's mildly obvious, right? But the fact that he clicks sub means that now I can foul play, and foul play is always going to be able to break sub because he's a plus two. Um, and, and regardless of anything else, uh, because he's at plus two, I'm always going to, going to be able to break the sub. And now, he's, and now he's in a position where he just kind of has to KO me. He's taking rocks chip, he's taking sub chip. Excuse me, and... Um, when he finally hits me and KOs me, he's going to have to take... 
uh, another bit of chip, and uh, again, this is where I'm starting to think. I really don't have answers to this thing, right? So I'm tr I'm, I'm, I'm racking my head. Yes, yeah, so he goes for the acrobatics finally, and and here he has to take the rocky helmet chip, and which brings him under half, right? So that's rocks chip, rocky helmet chip, and sub chip, and he's under half, which is exactly range for bear skew to aqua jet but i didn't build a bear skew to this piece that had aqua jet on it so it's dawning on me now that i don't have any answers left to this halucha now if my bear skew had aqua jet then i go into it now i ko this halucha and i believe uh, the only other mon on his team um and i believe he only had one other mon on his team uh, which I don't quite remember, but oh, it was the right on, right, right. It was a right on, um, and I have multiple mons that can deal with the right on. Um, it was a tough spot for me to be in. I hundred percent feel like I should have won this match for oh. Um, maybe I have to give up a, a mon to the right on at most. Maybe it's a three zero, but this felt like I should have been a win. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Um. If I had built out a bear skewed set that has Aqua Jet on it, um, we took a look at the at the sets after the match. Uh, from this range, I always I believe I always take it out. Uh, I don't think. I mean, maybe it was a Maldoro. I don't 100% remember, but uh, I should have been able to take it out with a Bandit Aqua Jet, and then most of the rest of my team just just is able to deal with a, a uh, that lone ride on in the back. Maybe maybe even Aqua Jet does it. I I I don't quite remember, but uh, this match is going to end with Halucha picking up five KOs, and it was rough. It was a rough one to even you know even watching now, but uh, I mean we, we definitely played this the best that we could. Um, I think I played this really strongly. I think I built really strongly. I think I ultimately did most of what I had to do to to win this matchup, but. What I had to do was bring Aqua Jet, right? And I never even clicked Close Combat. I never even clicked Crunch. I felt like Close Combat was going to be super important against the... Against the... Explode because I thought the Explode could potentially get out of hand. I thought that, that Crunch would be super important for the... For the Jirachi. I couldn't let the Jirachi get out of hand. But ultimately, it was just not having Aqua Jet, right? Um, and it would have meant, obviously, bringing three Water-type moves, which is never going to be great against the Rillaboom team, but realistically, I'm never doing much to the Rillaboom anyway, right? So I had to r rely on most of the rest, most of the rest of my team anyway. But here we are. It's going to end with this Veriscuta combo that should have ended the game in my favor. But uh, there's Halucha for the win. Halucha picks up five KOs. It didn't feel good. It didn't feel good to lose this way, right? Like I, like I say... A, decent amount i don't mind losing i just it just really doesn't feel good to lose in this way i should have won i should have taken out uh ultra players undefeated streak i should have put myself in a better position for the rest of the season for potential playoffs but uh this one hurt quite a bit all right it didn't feel good to lose in this way and you know obviously uh it's just gonna be how this match goes but uh, that's gonna be for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more UBL content and uh, more weeks of the PBAL, which is going to be really fun. It's already shaping up to be an incredibly fun time. Uh, but once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, out.